Hello and welcome to Ready Reviews. I'm your host JT Dickens and we'll be looking at some newly released music from this past month as well as some personal recommendations that I've been listening to. Be sure to stick around to the end for the local lookout to hear about some local Arkansas music. With Valentine's Day happening last month, we'll be reviewing pairs of releases on this episode, starting with... After six years of being away, the legendary band Paramore are back once again with a brand new album. This one features yet another change in their sound, but not one as left field as their previous release, After Laughter, which is an album I hold near and dear to my heart. The sound they pull from this time is more funky, but with some of the pop-punk sensibilities of the band's earlier work. Going into this one, I thought it would be a bit more political with the title track and the news, which details being scared to go outside because of all that's going on and our constant consumption of media and news. I was pretty off base with this assumption because with the lyrics this time, lead singer and certified queen of pop punk and emo Haley Williams pulls from more adult themes that are more external on the beginning of the album rather than the internal mental health conflicts throughout After Laughter. Running out of time is more about her bad time management, but she has said that it could be about something more if the listener wants it to be. Sekumsa has Haley talking about getting off of caffeine and her social life being a chiropractic appointment in a voice that reminded me of James Murphy from LCD Sound System, one of my favorite bands. As the album goes on, it gets more introspective, with songs like Liar and Crave being about Haley denying her feelings for someone close to her and holding on to nostalgia while not being present in the moment. Overall, if you've been waiting on this album or if you want to listen to some funky and vibey music, this is one to check out. While Paramore's album went in a new direction, Pierce the Veil's new album after seven years of being away is one that feels at home with the band's catalog. While the band stays in its lane of heavier riffs and Vic Fuentes' high-pitched vocals, it didn't really feel like it was treading similar water. The album reminded me a lot of their third album, Collide with the Sky, though this album doesn't have as many hits on it as the former. The only hit that I can think of off of this record has to be the first single, Past the Nirvana, but this doesn't mean that the album isn't good. Songs like Flawless Execution, So Far So Fake, and Single Even When I'm Not With You were some of my favorites, as they show the one bad light bulb hanging from the ceiling that's lighting the room atmosphere that this album exudes when it's at its best. My personal favorite deep cut has to be Shared Trauma, and you should definitely listen to the interlude in Rational Fears that comes before it, as it has such a clean transition. If you're already a Pierce the Veil fan, or are looking for some tunes from another legacy act in the emo scene, this is one to listen to. The Tallahassee Band's 2018 release is one that gives a little bit of everything that the band has come to be known for, with a few changes as well. While the instrumentals can be the typical affair, there are some faster, almost punk-leaning guitar and drum parts, like on the opener, Never Sure, or the track Is Nowhere. The lyrics that combine sincerity and a dash of sarcasm that made a parader known for are here as well. The long titled track, It's Hard to Be Religious When Certain People Are Never Incinerated by Bolts of Lightning, is probably the most angry track on the album, with themes of frustration and disillusionment. And the track, Where You Are, which tells the story of a person dying in war while their partner grieves over their loss. If you're looking for an album that has a fall vibe, or one that has a vibe of hometown nostalgia, this is definitely one to check out. It's my second favorite by the band, with my first being... If you know anything about Mayday Parade, you know this is the big one, the one that everyone always comes back to, and that's for good reason. This is one of the quintessential 2000 pop-punk emo albums, with its blend of absolute bangers and heart-wrenching ballads. The chemistry between Derek Sanders and former second vocalist Jason Lancaster is absolutely immaculate on songs like Walk on Water or Drown and their biggest hit off of this record, Jamie All Over. It really makes me wish he would have stuck around for more albums, but I'm glad he's on here at all. In its slower moments, tracks like Miserable at Best and The Closer, You Be the Anchor That Keeps My Feet on the Ground, I'll Be the Wings That Keep Your Heart in the Clouds, are great in showing that these guys are great at writing sad music, which they would do more on their future releases. Overall, if you're looking for an absolutely solid pop punk and emo album, this is one to listen to.
It's time for the local lookout. This segment is where I'll be shouting out a release from a local Arkansas band. This episode, we'll be taking a look at indie rock band Salon Blonde out of Conway, Arkansas. With an instrumental that sounds incredibly happy with lyrics that match this tone at first, the boys of Salon Blonde bring a warm and inviting tone on their first single, Sarah Song. This one has a very nostalgic vibe, as if you're driving through your hometown and hanging out with old friends. The lyrics, on the other hand, reach a bit deeper, as lead singer Evan Rout sings about falling in love with a girl and him constantly thinking about her after they break up. One thing to mention about both singles is that they sound exactly like you'd hear them at one of their shows, which shows just how good these guys are both in a studio and on stage. Overall, if you're looking for something to dance to while hanging out with friends, this is one to check out. However, if you're looking for something with a more slower and atmospheric tone, the guys bring more somber emotions on their most recent single, Sweet Surrender. The instrumental is practically drenched in reverb, which makes it feel like swimming in a pool of sadness, along with lyrics about changing for someone when they won't change and grow with you. It makes it a gut-wrenching experience. I also thought the ending of this song was pretty cool as well, but I'll let you guys check it out to understand what I'm talking about. If you're looking for something to listen to while you're feeling a bit heartbroken, this is one to check out, and it's my personal favorite of the two. Currently, the Salon Blonde boys are working on a brand new single, which will hopefully be out this month, along with getting back to playing more shows this summer after a brief hiatus. To follow everything that Salon Blonde is up to, and to see when they'll be playing a show next, you can follow them at Salon Blonde Band on Instagram. And that's all for this episode. If you want to stay up to date on all things HTV, consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell for more content here at Henderson Television. Also, follow us on Instagram, at henderson.television, for updates on future releases. Tune in next month for more recent personal favorites and local music. I've been JT Dickens, and until next time, listen loud. Welcome back to the honorable mentions part of the video where the credits roll beside me and I list off some albums that I did not get to review this month, so here we go. Gorillas, Cracker Island, Caroline Polachek, Desire, I Want to Turn Into You, Logic, College Park. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to Henderson Television.